Mm. My wife will tell you. Mm. Um, okay. <coughs> there is actually an epidemic of identity theft. We're still talking about the business of identity theft here. Self, until recently, cell phones weren't allowed in prisons. That has changed. That has changed. They are now allowed. Sometimes prisoners, family members will be allowed to give them prepaid cell phones to use for certain things. That's a phone. And many of the many of you have phones. I mean, mine is a very old-fashioned one. Mine actually only makes phone calls. You know. uh, but many of you have phones now that have internet access, um, send email. You can go online and do your banking activity. You have the facility in your hand to be an identity thief. If you, of course, nobody who is doing an MBA degree is going to think about doing that um, because the risks are just too high. And here's where you should all say, that's true. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is that the example I use of the bus boy who stole the various credit cards, basically he had CEOs he had CEO's assets in his closet because he had these fake and um, he had these fake cards sitting down at home that he could use whenever he needed them. You could steal, you could make a business of stealing CEO credit cards and using them. Never for large amounts, but over a period of time you could run up large bills. And this C, this conversion step, you could convert into a lot of assets. The instant credit faucet is on high right now in this country. Anybody here has never received an application for a new credit card or an invitation to apply for a new credit card? Anybody here never received one of those? <laughs> Every one of you has. Two or three a week. <laughs> and, and more by email, probably. And the reality is that if an identity thief gets a couple of these each day in a neighborhood, fills out the application, but maybe with a change of address. Now they have documents in your name, possibly. It may not be quite as easy as that, but often it is. And the reason is that for the credit card companies, getting new credit cards out there and getting them used gives them a competitive advantage. So they want people to apply for new credit cards because that's their source of revenue. What they do, the business side of it is they say, okay, what's the risk of fraud? of losses to fraud and they say it's whatever it is. How much revenue can I generate from these new credit cards? From legitimate new credit cards. And the amount of new revenue they can generate is more than the losses they're likely to incur because of fraud event use. So they win. So they don't really have a business incentive to stop the problem at that level. The other interesting thing is that criminals are very persistent people. The good ones are very persistent. So they use a credit card and it gets noticed. They don't use it again. But they go try it on another one, and another one, and another one, until they find one that they can run up a few thousand dollars on. Criminals are persistent. Law enforcement and the databases that they use are old. They are not very well maintained. Law enforcement has a thousand other things to do other than deal with identity theft. They lose interest a lot faster than the criminal. One of the things that I'm doing now is interviews with banks to try and understand what makes an identity document credible. And in talking to one of the CEOs of, of one of these banks, he said to me, you know, Ken, um, you have to put this in perspective. Yes, we have losses due to credit card fraud and other kinds of fraud that are related to, you know, this problem of identity theft. But you have to remember, we're running a bank. So we spend maybe 10 hours a day dedicated to the business of running a profitable bank. We spend maybe one of those 10 hours thinking about identity theft and the problems associated with it. The bad guys, that's their business. They think about identity theft 10 hours a day. We're never going to win. Because we're just not thinking about it enough and worrying about it enough. We're doing something else. What we can do is make it a little more difficult in the hope that the, the potential thief will move on. It's like having an alarm system in your home. 
Having an alarm system on your home is not going to prevent burglaries. But it may make it a little more difficult, a little more dangerous for the thief to come in. And so they'll try the next house down the road. Maybe they don't have an alarm system. And that's, that's basically what the banks do to try and prevent identity theft. They try and make it a little too expensive for the thief so that they move on and try it someplace else. So who can you trust? Well, <coughs> identity theft, the business of identity theft is equal opportunity employment. You don't need to be a particular race, creed, class, color, sexual, political preference, <laughs> anything. Doesn't matter. Equal opportunity employment in that business. Another true story, a Latin anthropology professor, this is going back maybe <coughs> seven years now, okay, just, just to give you some perspective. This is not so recent. But giving his final exam, he'd say to the students, I need to make sure that you get credit for what you do on the exam. So I need you to put your name, your birth date, and in those days the social security number, you know, was the student number. So I need your name, your social security number, your birth date. Guess what he just did? He just acquired identity data for those students. And he made quite a nice side living creating fake credit cards and putting <laughs> up um, bills on them. True story. So maybe you can't even trust your Latin anthropology professor. Of course, your, 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 uh, uh, your information systems professor and your accounting professors, those are okay. <laughs> um, I told you about the skimming, the little machines that you can use to skim credit card information. And by the way, the thieves, the identity thieves will pay you for this. $10, this is true, $10 for each MasterCard or Visa record that they, um, that they skim. That's just the number? Yeah. That's what, it, that's what the going rate is as of about a year and a half ago. $15 for American Express. Why? Because American Express is a little more careful with checking transactions. MasterCard Visa is a lot less careful. Uh, there's one of the people that I was interviewing, he said, for a quarter, or actually for a dime, you can protect yourself against skimming. Just run it across the mag stripe on your card, skimming machine won't work. Of course, it won't work when they run it through the machines, but that's okay. Then they just enter it manually, no problem. That happens all the time. You know, you run a card through, you know, the waitress runs a card through the machine, it doesn't read. They just enter the information manually. So it will work for the legitimate payment, but the skimming machine gets thwarted. John? Oh, sorry. Yes. No, I was going to ask you, those $10, what do you do? Typically, there's an organized ring of identity thieves, and they'll pay you as the way of who's skimming this information. They'll pay you $10 for each MasterCard. Do you have any one person? No, no, sorry. sorry. How do they know that they're legit numbers? And you could just make up all sorts of numbers. You could, you could scam them. <laughs> well, yes, yes, you could. You that could. could be a nice scam. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Scamming the scammer, right. Yes. and there's another place. Again, this is coming from some of the law enforcement people that I've interviewed. Coconut Grove, Hialeah, and... No. <laughs> Somewhere in Little Haiti. Those three places, you can actually go and buy a Florida driver's license. Mm -hmm. well, in, any name, in any name you want. Oh, it's a fake. Right? Oh, it's a fake. It's yeah. detected as a fake. Yes. Next time, next time, or if you have your driver's license handy, I'll show you something else interesting <coughs> about driver's licenses. Take a look at your driver's license, okay, and look at the number. The first, the first character in your driver's license is the first letter of your last name, okay? The interesting one is this. There, it's normally H, in, in my case, of course, it's H, 
and then there's three three numbers and then there's a hyphen and two numbers then a hyphen and three numbers the first number of that last set of three is zero through four if you are male it is five through nine if you are female according to so check just just because i've never actually checked this yeah check and tell me <coughs> they, your 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 driver's license is divided up as letter and three numbers and then three numbers and then two numbers and then three numbers and then a single digit at the end so the three numbers before that last single digit the first of those three numbers if it's zero through four that's for male if it's 